Let's get our sails connected. Coming up on the show, we dish out tips to get organized with Savvy Solutions and Krista Wagner. Looking for some hot stuff? AJ gets his hands on the sizzling new Blackberry torch, but how hot is it? Does going for a coffee break give you and your computer separation anxiety? Well, for a lot of us, we're sitting in front of our PC for 8 to 10 hours a day and we don't even get up. That's where that tan I have comes from. Well, I always kind of wondered about that healthy glow. Now I know it's because of radiation. <laughs> but you know what? Sitting in front of that desk can actually lead to back and neck pain as well. Well, we're going to go down, see Rainmaker Entertainment, and visit our friend Brian, who's suffering from some work-related back pain issues. His girlfriend sent us a message about it. Let's have a look. Hi, Get Connected. Please help my boyfriend, Brian. He's a computer programmer and works on a computer all day. He's often complaining about having a sore neck and pain in his shoulder because he sits at a desk for long periods of time. Can you help him out? Jessica. We're gonna help him out. We're gonna cover everything from ergonomics to email. Other shows go from A to Z, we go from E to E. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Well, we're also gonna go from iPad to netbook to determine what's best for Brian's demanding schedule. Well, what about our demanding schedule? Uh, yeah, let's go. Brian works at Rainmaker Entertainment, a computer animation company that employs over 200 creative minds. Rainmaker is known worldwide for pioneering some early CGI animated series and work in feature films. Well, Brian, it's really nice to meet you. We got that email talking about some of the issues you're having. Yeah. Maybe you can just summarize them for us. Well, Mike, I've been having some weird back issues when I get back um, home from work. Um, and I'm thinking it's because I spend so much time in front of the computer in yeah. my chair and I just, I'm there all day, you know, other than like taking a break every now and again. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, I kind of need some help with that. Well, uh, a lot of us now do spend uh, most of our time in front of computers. So let's go check out your workspace and uh, see what's happening. Okay. Well, clearly Brian has a, a lot of issues. Maybe we can solve some of them today with uh, his workspace. I've got a special guest. She's an ergonomic expert. Her name is Mandy Gallant from Ergo Risk. Thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome. So we had a look at uh, some of the problems with his workspace, and uh, we've hopefully solved some of them. So maybe we can just go through some of the, the main ones. Sure. Well, I always like to start with the chair, because if the person's not sitting from a good base of support, uh, nothing else matters. Uh, Does Brian's... the cap have anything to do with it? No, the cap is a, is a is nice it? touch. Okay. Yes, it's more the angle. Brian's certainly leaning back, the chair's a little low, he's been really hunching forward to his work, which would account for his discomforts. So Brian, let's adjust this chair. I'm gonna get you up a little bit higher here. Have a seat. I'm also gonna adjust the backrest to give you a little more support. So we'll straighten that up and we'll raise the height of it so it gives you a bit more support in your low back. Okay. Now this chair also has a feature that will lengthen the seat pan. Um, the levers are in the front of the chair. If you wanna give that a shot, just sliding the chair forward a little bit that will make it a better fit for you being a taller user. Did, did you, you even know that your chair could adjust this much? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. You know what, that's a good point. There are a lot of great chairs out there. If yeah. people don't know how to adjust them or don't know what the chair does, it doesn't I just know how to adjust mine up and down, and that's about That the is an important point. Yeah. Uh, I'll tackle the armrests next because I do want to give you support for that shoulder and upper back. So we'll raise them up a little bit, have your arm there, and that chair should be feeling much more comfortable. What do you think? Yeah, it feels great. Good. I've got another uh, option here. This is a footrest. Now, for Brian with his height, we don't necessarily need a footrest over the long term, but as a change of position, this is great. This one is adjustable. You have a few different positions that we can lock into, and I'll give you that, Brian. So you can slide that under the desk a little bit. That one's kind of cool. I've tried that one before. It's got the kind of the squishy foam on there, so it's it kind is. of you can massage yeah. your feet while you're you're using it. It's a nice option. Uh, we've also installed a keyboard tray here for Brian. So that has brought his keyboard and mouse down to a more appropriate height. Things were just much too high on the desk. Now, what we want is that elbow height is roughly at the height of the keyboard and mouse. So Brian, I'm gonna pop you up a tiny bit higher here. Okay, and slide in. 
And now this should feel a lot more comfortable for working with a lot better support. What do you think? Yeah, it feels really nice. This has like cleared up a ton of space on his desk as well. Absolutely. And then the nice thing about trays, apart from getting things down where you need them, they do open up a lot more desk space. And some trays are height adjustable as well so that you can have different heights for different users if it's a shared workspace. This is part of Kensington's uh, Smart Fit system. They've got a, a system here. You basically put your hand on this paper and depending how large your hand is, uh, you follow the color coding to uh, find out the exact adjustments for it as well. Well, that leads into what we were saying before. If you buy a piece of ergonomic equipment, slap it on the desk, it doesn't necessarily do you any favors unless it's adjusted to fit. So we've also uh, installed a monitor arm here. I actually have one on my desk. It's great for collaborating because you can uh, basically put the monitor wherever you want and it gives you a lot of range as far as where you can have that monitor. Absolutely, and we set this at the right height for Brian. I noticed as well you were hunching forward, squinting a little bit. So with a product like this, we can put it far away, bring it close so that it really suits your vision. So go ahead and tuck in there, back in your chair. How does that feel? Feels really good. Do you notice a big difference? Yeah, I do find like with my spine being straight, it's like I feel more alert, more awake. More alert. Because <laughs> <laughs> that used to be a big problem. You'd be like asleep on your desk by two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. So uh, another big thing for me, and I think so many people do this, we sit in front of our computer for hours at a time. Absolutely. I mean, the equipment is really 50% of it. The other 50% is how the worker interacts with it. Are they taking their breaks? Are they doing stretches? And uh, obviously, while we're doing this, we've, we've freed up a ton of desk space. But more importantly, uh, what we're trying to do is prevent uh, workplace injury as well. Absolutely. And we've set the equipment now in such a way that Brian has a reduced risk of stress to his neck and upper back. So we have basically shown up just in time to save Brian from being crippled for life. I think that's pretty accurate, just and, in time. And this just might make him more popular as well. There you go. Mandy from Ergo Risk, an ergonomic consulting company. Thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome. And uh, Brian, we want you to stick around because we've got some more issues that we want to help you out with. Now, we've talked a lot about how much time we spend working at our desks. Well, we want to encourage you to take some time away from your desk and take a break, maybe relieve some stress. And we have the perfect game app for you, Angry Birds by Rovio. This app has been downloaded 6.5 million times in over 60 countries. Now at 99 cents a pop on the iPhone, you do the math. Now the storyline goes like this. The notoriously sneaky green pigs have stolen the bird's eggs and the birds are seeking revenge. They use a variety of different slingshots to get their eggs back. The birds nosedive and catapult into walls and bricks and glass to kill the pigs. And as you pass each level, they get these special unlocked bird powers. So then they get to blow themselves up and drop bird bombs and catapult even faster and higher. This game is great. And why I love it is that it looks really easy at first, but as you go through each level, it gets more challenging and complex. And what's also great about it is that it has leaderboards and achievements. So you can actually let your friends know how you're doing on Facebook or Twitter. This game is great to relieve stress or just to take a break. This is Angry Birds by Rovio, and that's your app look. Up next, AJ sits with Krista Wagner and gets some ingenious tips on how to get organized. I want to take a look at a couple of websites that some of us at Get Connected can't live without, especially when it comes to helping us be more productive. The first one, lifehacker.com. Some of us swear by this website. The idea is, is that it's kind of like a search engine for blog articles. If there's anything that you want to know about, you simply type it in the search like I have here behind me and you get great results. I've typed in email overload and if you take a look here, one of the articles that's popped up is a great in-depth article showing me pretty much how to streamline my inbox so I don't get lost in all my emails that I get every day. Another good example would be like hiring a contractor. Just about anything that you type in there to search for, it's gonna help you with those everyday things that you're looking for advice on. 
another website I want to show you is called Organize Your Desk Day. And this one's important because in October 21st, the Thursday is actually a day around getting your desk organized. So this website will give you great tips and ideas and even product suggestions on how to be more organized at work. And it even has other articles that help you be organized in general. But most importantly, there's a great contest going on where they're doing an $8,000 home office makeover and you can simply enter to win by going to organizeyourdeskday.com. Those are just a couple websites us at Get Connected check out on a daily basis. You can watch all your favorite videos on YouTube on the Get Connected TV Show channel. Well, earlier we met Brian, who has some challenges when it comes to staying organized. To help him out, we brought in an organization and productivity expert, Krista Wagner. Hi. Hi there. How are hey. you? Very good. So. How do people be a success with organization? Well, let's just start by dressing your desk for success. The sign of a great desk is one that is not only productive, but it's also functional. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have all the basic office supplies you need to complete your work and have as few distractions as possible. The second thing I want to mention is to make sure that you dedicate about 30 minutes each week to plan for the next. Make sure you assess what happened last week, prioritize and plan what you want to accomplish next week. I know one thing I often see a lot of businesses, uh, paper is a huge issue, it tends to pile up. Paper definitely is a problem, whether it's at home or at work. My first suggestion would be to open your mail every single day. You would be surprised how quickly it really adds up. At the office, I would encourage everyone to create a desktop action file. At the office, we have a little bit more paper that requires our attention. I call these action papers. You can create a system such as this. You can simply place the papers that are appropriate for that month into that corresponding month. You will always know uh, where your paper is when you need it. It's a great system. Well, one thing that I rely on in my business is email, but I have a feeling I could probably use it better. Everyone could be using email better. My first tip for email is to send fewer emails so you receive fewer emails. I bet you didn't know for every one email you send, you get three in return. Oh no, I didn't know that. So the next time you go to send an email, ask yourself, does my busy recipient need this email to do their work? My second thing I would suggest regarding email is let go of email-itis. Do you know what that is? No. <laughs> email-itis, and I'm sure you know someone like this, is that person that is checking email in the morning, in the evening, in the middle middle of the night, going to the bathroom yeah. even, I've seen. <laughs> so give yourself permission to only check email during business hours, otherwise it creates the never-ending work day. People often struggle with time. What do you say to those people who say they don't have enough time? I would say that we all have the same amount of time and it's time to prioritize by getting the rocks on the calendar. And what I mean by that is putting the most important personal and professional events that you have in your life and getting them on and in your calendar so that you can make sure that you make time for them. We all have the same amount of time and it's just about prioritizing. The second thing that I would suggest is create a stop doing list. And this is pretty fun, AJ. Looking at your to-do list, completely eliminate anything that doesn't support your personal or your professional life. And you create a second list, that's your stop doing list. And you create it so that it reminds you that you don't have to do those things anymore. I could see my stop doing list being really big. It's, it's a great thing to do, it's quite fun. These have been some really good tips. What are some general office tips? You know, I would say for general maintenance, a couple of suggestions I would make. First thing, just put things away as you use them. Secondly, I would say at the end of each day, make sure that you clear your desk. The third thing I would suggest, and this is really important and not a lot of businesses do it, I would schedule an office-wide organizing day for your company. And what I mean by that is give all of your employees from the interns to the owner five hours of time to organize and declutter their office. I bet you didn't know that employees spend about an hour each day searching for misplaced information. No. That's a huge number affecting your productivity. So if everyone's given some time to organize and declutter their office, they will be much more productive and that's really going to affect your overall business. Well, thank you so much, Krista. You are so welcome. It's been fun being here. Those are some great tips from Krista Wagner, productivity and organizational expert with Savvy Solutions. If you want to find out more about these tips, check out the website, organizeyourdeskday.com or getconnectedmedia.com for all of the great tips to get to know and love your desk again. Stay tuned, you won't want to miss BlackBerry's newest phone, the Torch. Here are five examples of geeks who were either helped or hurt by their beloved gadgets. 
After the pain in her thumbs became unbearable, a Philadelphia mortgage broker was rushed to the hospital only to be diagnosed with a condition known as iPhone thumb. It took surgery to alleviate her symptoms. Caused by overuse of handheld devices, instant messenger enthusiasts should take notice. Ever been punched in the face by a Wii remote? If you haven't, don't try it. Gamers across the globe have been known to swing this wireless game controller with far too much gusto, resulting in face injuries on more than one occasion. The electric guitar. It would never have been invented if not for Les Paul, who, after shattering his arm in an automobile accident, found himself unable to use a traditional acoustic instrument. Paul created a guitar which would allow him to still be able to play regardless of his newfound disability. Once upon a digit, a motorcycle accident cost a Finnish software developer his thumb. The missing finger was soon replaced by a prosthetic one, containing two gigabytes of flash storage. A woman in heels recently celebrated Thanksgiving by playing Wii Sports. After dislocating her knee, she succeeded only in proving that fashionable footwear and video gaming should never ever mix. Gotta get Gotta get connect, connect, well, one way to be ergonomic is to actually get out of the office to do your work, and we're going to show you how you can do that with a smartphone. We're going to take a look at one from Research in Motion. This is the BlackBerry Torch. And I would say that the OS is probably the biggest, most significant change to this phone. It's running what they call BlackBerry 6. The reason why BlackBerry changed its operating system is because they were getting crucified for how bad their web browsing was, as well as how bad their multimedia aspects are, listening to music, checking photos. Let's start off by looking at the overall form factor. Right away, looking at it, it doesn't really look like a BlackBerry phone traditionally. Why? Because there is no keyboard that you can see right now. They've gone to a full screen on this, and essentially that's to compete with iPhone and Google Android phones. We have a full touch screen interface, and we have the pinch and zoom capabilities. I can change from portrait to landscape and back to portrait. It's got an accelerometer built into it, so I can do that. But you'll notice with this device that I can actually slide the screen up and get that full QWERTY keyboard. And actually, that's a nice feature for people that are hooked to Blackberries because one thing about Blackberries is that the BBM service is something that people get addicted to. And typing and texting, uh, especially in BBM, is something that people feel really comfortable having a physical keyboard. You will find that it does make the device a little heavier than most Blackberries on the market today. Um, and it also feels kind of like a little bit more clunky as a result of it. A couple other quick things. It's got a five megapixel digital camera built into it, which is pretty good for taking photos, actually really good for a smartphone, I would say. One feature I wanna show you right now with the camera is with geotagging. Right there, you can see I press the button and it puts up the overlay. We're taking the shot in Vancouver, BC, Canada. Great for sorting your pictures and of course, remembering when you took that shot, where you took it from. Another huge improvement with the BlackBerry 6 operating system is the built-in social networking. So if I just bring up my all menu here, you can see I've got Twitter, Facebook, and MySpace built right into my applications. These come preloaded. I can launch them and go straight into my Facebook and get all my recent updates, post my status, and check in on my friends in general. A very powerful feature in BlackBerry OS 6 is its ability for universal search. Let me show you an example of what I mean by that. If I simply just start typing any word, I'm gonna spell airplane, A-I-R, it's gonna give me the ability to search this word across a number of different places. I can search it in my options, I can search it in all my messages and text, I can search it across YouTube, even the app store for the BlackBerry. But here I'm looking for airplane mode so that I can quickly turn my phone off while I'm flying. I just go into options, and. Here I have control over my wireless modem. So the BlackBerry Torch is a huge advancement for them. And in terms of web browsing alone, they've made it a lot easier to get and find websites. Is it as good as Google Android or the Apple iPhone for web browsing? No. It's not, but it's a lot better than it was. And if you're hooked on BlackBerry, or if you have to stick with BlackBerry, because that's what your corporate organization uses, you're definitely gonna wanna upgrade to that six operating system, which we're seeing for the first time here on the BlackBerry Torch. We're hanging out with Brian again from Rainmaker. Earlier, we organized and souped up your, your workspace, basically giving you more desk space and also uh, ergonomically making you a better man. How are you feeling? <laughs> Feels pretty good, actually. Yeah. Like, it's pretty nice on my back. I'm not so sore and tired and stuff. And Do you find so you're more popular now? 
Oh, uh, well, a little bit. Because <laughs> yeah. everyone's like, ooh, look at that chair. You know, so. <laughs> well, we wanted to amp up your, your mobile workspace. Now, and that's the nice thing about technology is that you don't have to be tethered down to your desk space uh, anymore or your office. You can actually go out in the, the beautiful world here and, and take your, your, your tech with you. Right. And so what kind of things uh, would you be doing with uh, a mobile device? Well, I'll probably be like checking Facebook, email, um, looking for reference, because we have to do that a lot as animators. Yeah. Um, so that'd be really nice to like come outside and do that instead of just sitting at my desk where I work all day anyways. So portability and being connected are probably the most important things yeah. for you. Well, we've got a couple devices here I want you to have a look at. Okay. And uh, one, this is uh, probably kind of a familiar look to you. It's, uh, it's a netbook. Uh, these are kind of the smaller laptops. And the nice thing about them is the, the size. You still get some you know, half-decent power on there. I wouldn't be doing 3D animation, but right. you know, for uh, hooking up to email, browsing the web, and even watching some videos, they're not bad. This one comes in at about two and a half pounds. It's from Asus. It's their EPC. And over here, you might be familiar with this. I mean, if you look at any billboard or TV <laughs> ad now, uh, it's from Apple. It's their iPad. And we've kind of souped this up a bit. We've uh, put out a little stand and also a wireless keyboard, so you get kind of similar functionality to the netbook as far as being able to uh, to type in. This one is uh, a little lighter. It's about one and a half pounds, so it's a full pound lighter, so you can right. actually okay. feel that. So, I mean, if you're really on the go a lot, that might make a, a bit of a difference. They're both essentially computers. You're going right. to be able to do your email. Uh, they both have Wi-Fi, and if you want, you do have the capability to do optional 3G as well, so you can right. be, you know, on a train or a bus mm -hmm. and um, getting access to the internet. Um, you know, as far as video is concerned, they can both play back high definition uh, video. And the one thing though is just the upgradability. Is that an important right. thing to you? Yeah, uh, memory I think is pretty important in, in our industry. So uh, yeah. are they both upgradable? Well, that's the one, the one thing. The netbook is, uh, is upgradable. You can upgrade the RAM a, a little bit, not, not huge amounts. The hard drive, you could always stick in a, uh, another larger hard drive or an external USB hard drive. That's a good thing to have. With the, uh, the iPad, they only come in three sizes, 16, 32, or 64 gigs. So 64 gigs is still quite a bit, but if you're going to be using a lot of video, uh, that's something to keep in mind. But right. you know there are other storage options. There's a service from Apple called Mobile Me, mm -hmm. and that gives you additional space up on the, the cloud, oh. so you can store stuff up there. But then the important thing is you, you have to be connected. If you get unconnected, then you don't have access to your stuff <laughs> up there. That's important. So what, what do you think? But between the two, obviously size is important. The connectivity, upgradability. You know, one final thing I do have to say. Uh, typically, this iPad is twice as expensive as uh, the netbook. So knowing all that, if you had to choose, which one would you go for? Um, well, the storage on this is really good. Um, the price on that is not so good, <laughs> but I think I'd still lean towards the iPad uh, personally, just because I'm a little more creative than tech and it seems a little more user-friendly for someone like me. So you really are all about sleek and sexy. <laughs> you know it, Mike. <laughs> well, I'm glad we could help you out today. Now, about that cap. <laughs> Uh, I was really surprised that the chair I've been using um, is so adjustable and I haven't been using it properly. Um, I was very surprised at how comfortable it was sitting in like a, a proper position as opposed to like a lazy position. I thought Chris's tips on emo were really good. There was a lot of things I, I didn't realize. Next episode, we plunge into the art of self-promotion. We're gonna explore all the facets of social networking. Don't forget to uh, mention Get Connected in your Facebook update. I think I will. And tweet all your friends about how great we are. And MySpace, don't forget MySpace. Okay, that's enough.